Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Wednesday, June 20, or excuse me, June 2nd, 2021, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for Thursday, June 3rd. Futures are currently up. Um, looks like the S&P 500, based on futures anyway, may uh, try to take another shot at an all-time high tomorrow, or at least get close. Uh, we'll see whether or not that can, <clears throat> excuse me, continues overnight. But at least for now, it does look like uh, we'll get off to a good start on Thursday morning. Uh, before we get into uh, all the charts and all, I just want to run through the agenda with you. Um, we'll start off with the daily market recap, as we always do. Get into talking technically. I'm going to show you a big picture chart, talk a little bit about secular bear and bull markets and the relationship between the 10-year Treasury yield and the S&P 500. Then uh, go into short squeeze. Um, we're back at it again. I mean, if you remember back in January, a lot of these short squeeze stocks took off the GMEs, AMCs, those kinds of companies, and they are back in full force again. A couple of huge, huge days today. We'll go through some of those stocks, talk a little bit about a chart list we keep at earningsbeats.com to uh, track these types of events. Then we're going to get into scanning strategies. Got a interesting scanning strategy to talk about today. Then uh, earning spotlight and the three you must see. Uh, before we get into any of that, let me take you over to earningsbeats.com. Do want to just mention we are in the midst of an earnings beats spring special. So this is our best uh, deal of the year. Um, for $997, you get not only 12 months, which is our normal deal, but you also get two bonus months. So 14 months for $997. It's about a 52% savings over the uh, regular monthly amount of $147 if you figure that over 14 months. So a uh, really good uh, a deal. And uh, if you'd like to give us a shot, it's a great time to take out a trial. Uh, you can do that down below here with that join today button. Um, and then you'll have through, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll have through June 15th uh, to take advantage of our spring special. That's when it ends. So it is a good time to come in, check out our research platform, all of the education we provide, the market guidance and so forth. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, and if not, you'll walk away with some chart lists. Um, you know, some of the things that we do, uh, if you've got a stockcharts.com extra or pro account, uh, you can download our chart list right into your account. It's a great feature. Um, also, just want to point out that we do have a free Earnings Beats Digest newsletter. I'd love to have you sign up. Name, email address is all it takes. No credit card required. You can unsubscribe at any time. Just simply fill that out. Hit that subscribe button. We'll make sure we get you set up and uh, ready for our next uh, newsletter article, which will be out on Friday morning. All right, let's move on and uh, talk a little bit about the daily market recap, what happened on Wednesday. Um, really, when you look at the major indices, not a whole lot has been going on. We continue to consolidate uh, mid caps and small caps, which had good days um, on, uh, on Tuesday, struggled a little bit on Wednesday on a relative basis. Uh, small caps, not so much, mid caps a little bit more. But really, it's just sideways consolidation. When I look across at the major indices, I'm not really seeing anything horrible. Um, the NASDAQ's clearly the weakest on a relative basis, but we've even seen strength there over the past few weeks as we uh, move into June. Looking at the sectors, energy. How can we avoid talking about energy? Nice move, breaking, above, breaking out above the double top in May near that 55 level. We actually closed over 55 on Wednesday, so that was good action. Uh, real estate continuing to move higher. Technology uh, on a relative basis has not been a very good performer, but you can see it now trading above its moving averages and just simply going sideways, a little bit of a bull flag. So a breakout above 140 would certainly be bullish. Uh, we'll watch to see if we can get that. Um, materials, not so good on Wednesday. Same goes for discretionary stocks, but materials are just sideways consolidating. Um, as long as we continue to hold that rising 20-day moving average, that group is fine. If we fail, then I think we could go down to probably 85, maybe just above the 85 level. That's where we should hit some price support. If that fails, then I would look for the 50-day moving average, which we haven't tested since back all the way in the uh, beginning of March. 
Discretionary stocks, a little bit more challenging here, trying to get through the moving averages, seem to be rolling over. Got some big uh, economic reports coming up in about a week with the uh, CPI out next Thursday, and then followed by the PPI the Tuesday following along with the Tuesday, Wednesday Fed meeting. So a lot coming up. Market's going to have to digest all that. And uh, it does make me wonder maybe if the market will struggle, uh, especially if we get a false breakout heading into all of that news. Uh, don't be surprised if we pull back. That's kind of the history of June. All right, let's uh, move on to the 10-year Treasury yield. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this and the relationship with the S&P in just a bit. But we just simply continue to consolidate sideways. Uh, looking ahead to Thursday, we do have a number of economic reports coming out. May ADP employment report is due out in the morning. The estimate there, 627,000 jobs. April was 742,000 jobs. So we're looking for a little bit of contraction there. Initial jobless claims last week, 406,000. We're expecting a drop to 400,000. Q1 productivity, the first estimate last month came in at 5.4%. This estimate, the second estimate, expected to move up slightly to 5.5%. May services PMI composite in April was 63.5. We're looking for a jump in May to 68.1. That's pretty significant. And then May ISM services expected to rise a little bit more modestly from 62.7 in April to an estimate of 63.1 uh, tomorrow morning. We'll see whether or not uh, um, we hit that number or whether or not uh, you know, we fall short. I do think that the economic activity that we've been seeing continues to strengthen, and that does bode well for stocks. Looking at this chart here, as I pull it up, you can see down below, financials on a relative basis still performing well. Same goes for industrials. And that's because we still remain in this uptrend, sideways consolidating, but that's bullish. And I think what we're seeing here in financials and industrial suggests that we're probably going to see a move back up in the 10-year Treasury yield. Um, as we get closer to those inflation reports, I would certainly expect to see things move up. And if the numbers come out the way I expect, uh, which I think we're going to see some um, headline numbers that are going to shock a lot of folks, then I do think that there's going to be some selling in Treasury, sending those yields higher. So I would expect financials to continue to do well in particular. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's move on to talking technically. So I just wanted to bring this up briefly. This is my long-term big picture uh, S&P 500 chart. It's a 100-year chart. That's about as big as it's going to get. And I always look at these lengthy periods, these secular bear markets and secular bull markets. And what I want you to focus on is just simply looking what the S&P 500 does during these secular bear markets. And then what happens during a secular bull market where it just seems like we go up no matter what. Now, keeping that in mind, I'm going to show you a couple of lengthy periods uh, comparing the S&P 500 to the 10-year Treasury yield. Now, this is back from 2000 to 2009. So this is going back into this period right here where we've had a lot of sideways action. This is more of a secular bear market. Secular bear markets don't go down for a dozen years, but we have usually a couple of steep drops. And you can see that really going back uh, the last hundred years. You can see this in a few different occasions where we have some really rough patches for an extended period of time. Um, and we really just can't break out for a long time. And that's what happened 2000, 2009. Now, during that period, what I want you to focus on is what happens when the treasury yield, the 10-year treasury yield goes up and down. So the best period for the 10-year treasury yield was from 2003 to 2007. And that did coincide with a cyclical bull market within a secular bear market. Secular meaning long-term, cyclical meaning shorter term. So here is a five, four or five year bull market within that secular bear market. And during that period, the yield you know, went up. So money was rotating away from treasuries. That money then moved into equities and we saw rise. But the big distinguishing feature between a secular bull market and a secular bear market, at least in my analysis, is that when that 10-year treasury yield is dropping, 
That means money is going into treasuries. During secular bear markets, the money going into treasuries is coming out of the stock market. And you'll see in a minute during secular bull markets, that's not the case. So I, I have just highlighted five different times where we saw some pretty good movement to the downside in the yield. And during each of these red shaded highlighted areas, take a look at what happens to the S&P 500 from the start of the drop to the end of the drop. Each one of these periods, all five of these periods have tremendous declines with the most shallow being 12.9. And that was actually the most shallow um, period of decline there in the 10 year treasury yield. But look at this steep drop, 31% S&P dropped 31% in about six months while we were in this decline. We dropped 17, almost 18% while we're in this decline. Another 18% in this decline and 38% in this decline. But you also notice that these secular bear markets, you know, we take a hit, we bounce, we take another hit, we bounce, we take another hit. That's the theme in a secular bear market. That's not what we get in a secular bull market. Look at the difference here. So now this is from 2011 through 2021. So this is the last 10 years. Now in this case, you can see the S&P 500 has been rising. The 10 year treasury yield still has had periods where it's gone down quite a bit, but look at what's happening on the way up in the yield. When the yield goes up, now remember we had kind of a, you know, a decent period of bull market activity in 2000, 2009. But um, what's different is when we pull back in the 10-year treasury yield, when we have these declines, the S&P here goes up. Here we have a big decline. We just go sideways. Here we have a decline. We go up a little bit. Here we have a decline. A lot of choppiness, but we go sideways. Here we have another big decline. That was the pandemic. But you know, from start to finish, we actually were kind of break even. Um, so... The big declines in the yield did not result in big selling. In a bear market, secular bear market, when you have those big declines in yields, the stock market gets killed. So I just wanted to point that out. And then notice when we have these periods of um, a rising 10-year treasury yield, you know, the media is trying to tell us that yields are going to go up, that interest rates are going to rise, and therefore that's bad for stocks. What I'm telling you is that is not the case. Now, at some point, interest rates, if we get to a certain level, you know, 5 6% on the 10-year treasury yield, then yes, that can be a problem that we've run into before back in the 1980s and, of course, in the 70s when yields were way higher than that. Interest rates were very high. Yes, that's a problem. But at 1.5%, 1.6%, this is still, from a historic standpoint, this is incredibly low interest rates. So don't get upset because interest rates are on the rise. Even if we go to three or 4%, which we're a long way away from that right now, I think this bull market continues. I don't think there's any problem whatsoever with the market digesting higher interest rates. But the media is going to act like it's a problem, and we're going to go through issues, and we'll go through periods where the market sells off, and you got to watch it. You know, you're going to see it happen. But I believe longer term, we go higher, even with higher interest rates. And I expect rates to rise. I, I expect in 2021, later in 2021, we could be over 2%. And I think in 2022, I wouldn't be surprised if we hit 3%. But I see the, mar the stock market going higher in that environment. All right, let's move on to... Um, let's move on to short squeeze. So what I wanted to do here is I just wanted to show you some of these stocks that on Wednesday just exploded. And it's not just Wednesday. I mean, we've seen this now recently, and I've been writing to our members about it. I think uh, three or four days ago in our daily market report, I issued uh, several companies that were high, that had high short interest and they were starting to make a move. You wanna be careful. You don't just wanna buy any stock that's got high short interest. Um, 
I mean, actually on Wednesday, you probably could have just about done that. And I'll show you that in just a second. But the ones that break out with high short interest, you definitely want to uh, pay attention to. Now, AMC has got a high short interest, but it's not actually on our list. It comes in just a little bit below the uh, criteria needed to get onto our short squeeze list. But that hasn't changed or it hasn't stopped AMC from rising. You can see the stock uh, going into options expiration. We were looking for a pullback. We got it for two or three days from about $15 down to 12. And since then, 12 to 62. It's been a five bagger in the last seven trading days. That is remarkable to me, just crazy. But it is heavily shorted. And that's what can happen uh, when folks are required to cover their positions. But let me give you a couple of others that are on our list. GME, you might remember this one from January. Remember that huge run up from under $20 a share to $500 a share in about two weeks? Um, well, it's under, you know, it's moving again to the upside. Volume's picking up, although it's not like it was before, but neither is the short interest. Short interest, I think, on GME is close to about 20% right now, as opposed to that 140% short interest that we had back in January. Um, another one that had a huge day today is uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Look at this move, up 62%, closing at $44. Big, big move there. Others maybe a little lesser, but really starting to move. Tilray, um, Tilray up almost 12% today, closing back above its 50-day moving average, starting to strengthen. Anyone who shorted this stock from lower levels is going to begin to feel that pinch. And that's why you wanna see stocks beginning to uptrend because the more they uptrend and the bigger the volume gets, the more and more shorts that are underwater and begin having to cover their shorts. So it's almost like buying creates more buying, which creates more buying. And that's why these stocks go up so fast. Another stock that I've been talking about recently is uh, Blink Charging, BLNK. Uh, the volume just barely picked up today. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but it is above the 20 and it closed back above the 50. This is one potentially that could make a run. Now, here's a stock. This is Root, Root Inc. Um, volume has been picking up. It went through the 20, but it's been a long-term downtrend. So I don't think there are too many shorts at this point that are underwater, but with so much attention on these shorts and Root um, has been a pretty heavily shorted stock, one to keep an eye on. Um, another one, and I could go through a bunch of these, but I, let me just pull this one up. This is um, AXDX. Four or five days in a row though now, stock was under six. Now it's above eight, volume starting to pick up. As this one makes a move, this is another potential short squeeze candidate. And when they move, they move fast. I mean, here you can kind of see just making a move, getting through the 20 and the 50, and look where it was by the end of that month. From $8, it, was up, it, it, it had doubled. Now, I'm not saying AXDX is going to double from here, but it could. And when you get into the short squeeze stocks, you have to recognize the possibility of that. Uh, one last thing I'll do in the, and show you, the, this is our short squeeze chart list. Right now, there are 42 stocks on here, and this is what they did just today. Bed Bath & Beyond, 62%. Um, PETS, which uh, was up 58%, GTT, 57%. Workhorse, this is the highest shorted stock right now at 41.93%, up almost 20% today. Um, and then you can kind of see. So in our list, what I do is I uh, provide this. I number all of these stocks within the list showing the highest percentage. So they're all in order of the short percentage of float. And you can see what happened to these companies today. Many of them very strong. And then uh, going down to the bottom of the list, uh, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Bottom of the list here, the lower price. So everything's, in order to make this list, the short percentage of float has to be over 20%, which is still a high number. Don't think, oh, 20%, that's not much short interest. That's still a lot of short interest. That's the purpose of having them on this list is that when you see stocks begin reaching 20% or higher, that's when, in my opinion, you can start to see short squeezes really take off. All right, scanning strategies. I did a scan 
And what I ended up doing today is I looked at 52 week highs. So the first part of this is stock and the 50 day moving average of volume is over 200,000. So I wanna make sure I'm getting liquid stocks. From there, I've got, you can see two brackets around the exchanges because I wanna look at both uh, New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ. So if a stock's got heavy volume and it's on either one of these exchanges, then it could be included. Then the next criteria is that it's got to set a 52 week high. Um, and that's what this part over here is, is uh, saying right here. So there it's got to be at a 52 week high. And then finally, it's got to do one of three things. It's got to print one of three different types of candles. And that's why I've got the, the or clause in here. It could be any of these three, but obviously it can't be all three. That's why you have to put the brackets on both sides, the double brackets and use the or clause because it needs to be a bearish engulfing or a filled black candle or a shooting star. It can't be all three of them. So if I just said and and left these brackets out and said and 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 nothing would be returned. Um, because you can't have all three of those. So it's and, and then use the double brackets around those three and use the or clause, all right? So what this is looking for, are these? it's looking for stocks that set a 52 week high on either the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. It averages trading at least 200,000 shares a day. And in addition to setting a new 52 week high, it printed a reversing candlestick. And when I ran that scan, I had 38 stocks returned. And so I put them in a chart list and these are the stocks. Now I'm gonna bring up a few of these to give you an idea of what I would look for. Now, I don't like shorting in a secular bull market, but if I was going to short, I would be looking for stocks that were breaking out, maybe had failed breakouts or reversing candles. And so let's take a look at some stocks that I thought I found interesting as we go through here. So first up is AIG. So AIG did break out, set a new high, but it also printed a bearish engulfing candle. That's why it was included on this list. Looks like maybe a slight negative divergence as well. I would think we're gonna pull back maybe at least to the 20 day and quite possibly the 50 day. So AIG, even though it hit a 52 week high, I don't like that reversing candle. Next up, AMH, this is American Homes for Rent. A uh, little bit of a doji here, but notice the last few moves to the upside. Look at that um, PPO coming down. Doji's can signal that I didn't scan for a doji, but doji's can signal a um, reversal. So AMH, I think, is one to kind of keep an eye on. BWA, this is Borg Warner. Uh, there's your filled black candle. So off of a nice uptrend from about $49 to above 55, we printed that black uh, filled candle. And from there, I would expect short-term weakness. Um, next up, PEAK. This is uh, Health Peak Properties. Uh, another one that went up, got that, it's filled black candle. That's why it's on here. Um, it did have a breakout, but it's almost like a false breakout on heavy volume. It made the breakout, was well into breakout territory, and then came back down and closed below the open. Uh, so that makes me a little nervous in the near term. We'll see what happens with this one. And then the last one I wanted to show you was Red Rock Resorts. Uh, there is another bearish engulfing candle off of this uptrend. Now, PPO looks good. I think maybe on this one, we just go down to that 20 day. I would say maybe around 42, 42 and a quarter uh, is what I would be looking for here on a pullback on Red Rock. So that was just a way of, of running a scan on 52-week highs that could be setting up bearishly in the short term. Um, now, if they go up and set, up, set a new high, I would immediately cover any short I had. So this is not designed to just short and hold. This is designed to look for immediate results. And if it didn't work out, doesn't work out, and we break out above the candle that's in play and it sets a new 52-week high, I would cover. I wouldn't take any chances. All right, next up, let's move to earnings spotlight. Had some of these coming out after the bell. Uh, Splunk came out, they missed. They were expected to lose 72 cents. They actually lost 91 cents. Stock was down, excuse me, almost 4% after hours. It's been in a downtrend, relative strength is horrible. 
I would not have been expecting much of a report and we didn't get one. It was a bad report. Network Appliance, now they beat. And this is a company that actually has been performing pretty well. Look at Network Appliance relative to computer hardware. You see the difference between this stock and Splunk, how it's performing relative to its peers. Network Appliance is beating its peers and Wall Street likes the stock and the company comes out and beats earnings, a buck 17 versus a buck 12. So that looks good. ESTC, this is Elastic. This is a stock that I wrote about recently thinking, okay, maybe we're gonna make a run into uh, their earnings report. Well, that's exactly what we've been doing. We've been making this run into their earnings report and it was a pretty decent earnings report. Expected to lose 16 cents. They lost only eight cents and the stock was up 14% after hours. Uh, so that was up, I don't know, probably up in the mid 130s, something like that. Um, maybe 134, 135. So it uh, looks like it's at least gonna be a pretty good open. We'll see if we clear that high. My guess is we've got this move down left shoulder, neckline, head. I think we're going to go up here, probably pull back after we gap up would be my guess. So ESTC, it's done its thing, heading into earnings. Um, but I would probably be taking profits on that gap up if I owned it. GWRE, this is Guideware Software. Uh, it has been trending down. The stock uh, did beat estimates, came in it with a 16 cent loss instead of the 24 cent loss expected but it was relatively flat after hours, so nothing big there. Uh, one other one I'll mention before we get into the three you must see, and that is AI. AI was expected to lose 29 cents. They only lost 24 cents, so they did beat. Had a nice run going into its earnings report, but the stock's down 9% after hours. So I think a trip back down perhaps to test that 20 day moving average could be in order. I see a bottoming head and shoulder possibly, left shoulder, neckline, head. This could be the right side of the neckline, which is uptrending, which I like. And I think a pullback to the 20 day would put in a higher um, reversing right shoulder, which I think would be bullish as well. So that's what I'd be looking for. I think with the beat and the stock pulling back, I think the 20 day could present an opportunity if we get back down that far. All right, let's uh, move on. I wanna talk a little bit about, um, well, I'm going to go into the three you must see. Now here, what I want to do is also show you stocks that I would be very careful with, even though they're breaking out or they've recently broken out. AWI, Armstrong World Industries. This was on that scan that I showed you just a few minutes ago. Look at that reversing candle. That is a bearish engulfing candle off of a 52-week high, lower PPO. I think we've got a negative divergence in play. I think AWI is in trouble short term. I would be really careful here with this stock. Uh, doesn't mean the long term is bad, just the short term, I'd be careful. Next up, AWI. Oh, I just did AW, ADS. Let's do ADS. ADS had a 52 week high intraday, got the 118 or 128.16, taking out the high from May 10th, but we failed to hold it into the close. Negative divergence on that false breakout. Seems like in the short term, maybe we're going to see a little pullback there. Last one, NUE. This is Nucor. Um, big breakout, look at the negative divergence, and then we failed to hold the breakout the very next day, and the selling was on pretty good volume. I think Nucor could be in trouble in the near term as well. Of course, any of these that show possible reversals, if they break out the new highs, let them go. All right, that's it for me. Again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Trading Places Live. I certainly appreciate everybody tuning in when you can. Next Trading Places Live will be Monday over at earningsbeats.com starting at 9 a.m. Eastern. Hope to see you there. Uh, have a great Thursday and rest of your week and into the weekend. Uh, happy trading, everybody. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.